Thanks for tuning into the Boston Roll channel. Liking the video and subscribing to the channel are free and easy for you, and they help me out a lot. If you want to go further with your support, Patreon and YouTube membership offer access to the Boston Roll Discord community, early access to lists, written content, things like that. You can have me play your deck on the channel, and the highest tiers come with individual coaching sessions. If you use YouTube membership, you also get sweet badges and emotes integrated here into YouTube. You can support the channel while you shop at tcgplayer.com by using my affiliate link in the video description. And you can play any deck anytime by using a cardhoarder.com loan account on Magic Online. If you want to wear your support, check out the merch store. And of course, thanks for being here. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome to a rare but exciting Bosch and Roll limited video. I've been asked by Patreon subscriber Francis York Morgan to do a Supreme Cube draft. Supreme Cube is the vintage cube. Just the Magic Online Vintage Cube, whatever's in that is also in this. But instead of drafting like normal, passing around the table for with eight other people, you get 36 first picks. Well, technically 18 first picks and 18 second picks, because you just get presented with 18 packs and you take two cards out of each. And they are all pure first picks, to my knowledge. Uh, I don't believe they remove the cards you've already seen from the pool. So you could end up with four Black Lotus, three Tinker, that sort of thing. Like, uh, I did one of these last year. I saw a lot of crazy screenshots from people last year. I believe the rules are the same this year. Once you've taken your 36 first picks, you build a 40-card deck, you add some lands, and off you go. Decks in this format are going to be bonkers. You're going to be playing against people who can turn one kill you. You're going to be playing against people who might have four strip mines. Uh, I don't know. Like, it's going to be nuts. The deck I had last year when I recorded this for the channel, I think I had two or three mines desires, a ton of fast mana in Moxin and Rituals, and I think I had some turn one kills. Uh, I went two and one in my league, only losing to a deck that also had turn one kills, and they won the die roll. That's how it went last year. No idea how it's going to go this year. We could get some bad variants and not get a lot of those busted cards, maybe we'll have an even better deck. But that's how a draft works. This is Supreme Vintage Cube. Let's jump into the draft. Welcome to this Supreme Cube draft. We get two first picks out of every pack. This is horrible. There's no power, no fast mana, no storm spells. I guess I'll take Emrakul. That thing can pay off pretty hard. And is it... Remand somehow? Remand and Emrakul? This is a really bad start. I could take Spire Bluff Canal over Remand. Uh, Blue-red are colors I'm extremely interested in being in in this cube. Yeah, I think it's Emrakul and Spire Bluff Canal, both on spec. And now we got Mox Ruby. Thank you for showing up. Upheaval is a good one. Vamp Tutor. Card negative, but still strong if we're just trying to assemble combos quickly. Yeah, I'm in for Mox Ruby and Vamp Tutor. Upheaval is tempting, but I don't think games are going to go that long in general. Strip Mine, I like. Or some Negation could help keep me alive in this Busto Cube. I wish my draft had any direction yet, but it doesn't. I'm going to go with Strip Mine and Force some Negation. Now we got Coalition Relic which is normally good, but uh, Thieving Skydiver could be sweet. There's going to be a lot of power in this cube, and this will usually have something to steal, and usually for free. Teferi can take over stack-based games. Bolus to Citadel has the highest upside. And somehow I think... Oh, I, there's a Through the Breach right here, and I already have Emrakul. Okay. Through the Breach and Bolus to Citadel in the pile. Let's go. Mana Crypt, that's an easy one. It's going to slam that right in. Watery Grave can fix the mana. We are settling into kind of a Grixis combo deck here. Where's Up Signet is Ramp versus the fixing of Watery Grave. I don't think I want Bargain. I already have a Citadel, which is just like a better card. And I have no way to enable either of those yet. I'm going to take the Watery Grave. Chrome Mox I'm excited about. Any fast mana is getting taken here. Wishclaw Talisman for the Tutor, Deceiver Exarch to invest in the possibilities of the future. And putting Chromebox in the pile, then we'll think about the rest of it. 
Sundering Titan can be slammed in with Through the Breach if I find a Tinker. That's a backup to Bolas' Citadel that I can put in. I don't have any green cards, and I'm not really looking for any for a Breeding Pool. If I find a Channel, I might regret not taking Breeding Pool. This Channel is good with Emrakul, of course. Thalia is a monster in this cube, but that is not the deck I'm in. I'm in the deck that gets beat by Thalia, not the Thalia deck. I won't do it. Okay, Sundering Titan, get in. Sneak Attack goes with the Emrakul and the Sundering Titan. I like that one. Sneak Attack's going in, and it's either Sheldock Isle or Volcanic Island in the other. Like, Sheldock Isle does enable crazy things. Limited decks start with 40 cards, so it's pretty easy to turn on the 20-card rule, but I don't think we're even going to go that long in most of these games. I'm taking Volcanic Island. Another kind of low power pack here, probably Frantic Search, comes in, and then I'm looking at, I don't really have anything that enables opposition. Like if Emrakul's in play, I'm not using it to tap down a land. It's probably Torrential Gear Hulk. It's a blue card for Force of Negation, and I just found a looting spell. And it's pretty powerful off Sneak Attack or Through the Breach. Wow, Through the Breach, Torrential Gear Hulk, Flashback Through the Breach. My god. Okay. Talk myself into it. Urza, my dear friend Urza. Are we in anything that can use him? Playing an additional land each turn is nice, but we're nowhere near green. And this is also a 4-mana 2-2 two -two in this crazy format. I think I want Urza and Scalding Tarn. Scalding Tarn fixes me to the black, gets me the watery grave. I have this volcanic island as well. Oh, Underground Sea is also just in this pack. No, that's the one I want. I got booty blinded by the Scalding Tarn. We, I don't know that we have enough islands or enough time to support Gush. I just want to make sure I can cast my good spells. So I'm going to continue fixing. Okay, here we go. Time Walk in Mox Emerald. Also in the pack are Demir Signet, Mana Vault, and Mere Battlesphere. None of which I'm going to take over the two power cards, but... Uh, the that's more like it. That's a that's a pack. Can I get a tinker anywhere? Not yet. Sphinx of the Steel Wind is a good one to tinker into. I'm just assuming I'm going to get tinker at some point, which is getting thinner and thinner. Yog will can flashback time walk. It is a payoff with frantic search. Mystical Tutor can find through the breach. Oh, this could be an oath deck. Wow, but I have nowhere near green mana. Oof. Could be a young Pyromancer deck. Just something to do here. Sphinx would be nice if I had a Tinker, but I don't. And I already have Sundering Titan and Bolas the Citadel. Yeah, I think I'm going to take young Pyromancer and Yogwill. Archon of Cruelty is a, an absolute beast coming in off Sneak Attack or Through the Breach. And there's an Exhum here as well that does combo with Frantic Search. I love me a Maul Drifter. But I don't think this is the time to take it. And I think games are going to go too fast for a library to do anything. Wheel of Fortune is a really nice one. But I'm not really storming into anything. Yeah, I'm going to take Archon and Exhum. Start to put together this reanimator deck. This is another low power pack. Uh, I actually like Layla quite a bit. She draws cards. She's a side juke. Like... If I have Young Pyromancer and Layla providing pressure on like normal board states while I threaten these various combos, don't hate that line. Inferno Titan is a completely castable fatty. I'm going to grab Layla. Dark Six Shores is the only card I'm considering over Inferno Titan. In Memory Deluge, I just don't think the game's going to go that long. I'm not really in a place to use Cabal Ritual. Inferno Titan's in. Old Pyromancer to go with my young Pyromancer. That puts things in the graveyard for me to reanimate them as well. Force of Will might be important in this format to stay alive. My blue count is not high. I only have five blue cards. But it's not too late to take more. Oh, I already have Force of Negation. How many of those do I actually want? I'm going to take Season Pyromancer for sure. And this actually isn't a very good pack. Uh, Emrakul the Promise End is like something you could reanimate, but it's not that not that sexy. Elder Gargaroth could be reanimated, but I want to stick to monsters I can actually cast if necessary, and I think I have enough monsters. I need to enable them. 
I am gonna take Force of Will. I'll respect the the busted nature of this format. Imperial Seal. Ooh, I do like Fallen Shinobi, and I do have enough low cost creatures that this might actually happen. Mana Leak is nice. It's also a blue card for my two forces that I just mentioned. I don't have a lot going on for. Probably don't want Ponder. This is the only time in my life I'm not gonna take a Ponder. I usually love Ponder. Imperial Seal. There's a lot to like about. How many Vamp Tutors do I need in a deck versus the potential of Fallen Shinobi? Which is like reasonable to reanimate and reasonable to go through the breach or sneak attack. And it also works with my low cost creatures. And it's also blue. Yeah, Fallen Shinobi. Okay, reanimate. Definitely. We needed one of those. Lemming reanimate into the pile. What else do we got here? Gitaxian Probe lets me know what my opponent's up to and ups my blue count. While also thinning out my deck, just 39 card deck. I think I like that better than Top or Him. Marsh Flats doesn't get my red lands, so that's not that helpful. Yeah, Gitaxian Probe, let's go. Got Jace Vryn's Prodigy, which enables things uh, Hallbreaker Horror. Oh, Fractured Identity. Nowhere near white mana to cast this. Unfortunate. I think Jace makes sense. I could even attack with Jace and Ninjutsu it. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, the, the looting is good. The repeated spells are good. Having something to do on low mana is good. And now it's between Scarab God and Hallbreaker Horror. Like, Hallbreaker Horror is obviously uh, an absolute beast of a creature. But Scarab God is both something I can reanimate and it also reanimates. Or I could take Knight's Whisper and just get Velocity. I think I want Scarab God, though. Okay, last pack. Is there anything good here? Animate dead. Yes. Yes, please. And it's probably just Lotus Petal. This was a pretty disappointing Supreme Cube. This feels like a normal, pretty normal cube deck. There, it's not that Supreme. I guess I do have three zero mana artifacts, but still. Last time I did this, my deck had like three Minds Desires and a bunch of Black Lotuses. And this feels much, much tamer. In comparison, I think Lotus Petal is what I want here. Ancient Tomb is the other consideration. I'm not choosing Portent. Yeah, I'll take the fast mana wherever it comes from. Time to build this thing. I think all of my lands are going to make the cut. I did pass a Crucible of Worlds at some point in the draft. I just don't think we were doing that, even though I have the Strip Mine. All of my fast mana is in as well. And I'm kind of a Grixis combo control deck. That's where we landed here. Like, I do want the various fair cards in the deck. Where my cuts are going to come from is what monsters end up not making the cut. I'm going to try to get figure out the balance of enough monsters to reanimate when I loot and not enough that I flood out on them. So I'm going to build a normal Grixis deck, and then see what slots are left over at the end. Bolas the Citadel is not going to make the cut, unfortunately. We never found a Tinker. Yagmas will. This deck doesn't really have a lot of velocity. We have Gitaxian Probe and Lotus Petal, I guess, that really push Yog will. But there's a lot of fat in this deck that I'm not sure we're going to have room for. There's currently five actual lands in the deck. One of them strip mine, which may or may not make the final cut. I want to make sure I have a mana base first before I start figuring out how many slots I have to work with. That's just how my brain works. A normal limited deck, you can generally start with 17 lands and play a little less if your curve is low, a little more if your curve is high. The Supreme Cube is going to throw a wrench into that normal one, but I'm going to start with my normal deck building, heuristics, and then whittle down from there. There are currently five lands already in the deck, actual lands, and then there is Ruby Emerald Mana Crypt and Chrome Mox. I'm okay calling those lands. I'm not going to call Lotus Petal a land, because you only get it once. By my count, that makes nine lands in the deck, and that means that we have room for eight more, at least on the first pass. Oh, wow. 
Magic Online is suggesting I add 20 lands to the deck. Oh, right, because I haven't filled in my curve yet. Okay, that makes sense. I'm going to start like this. There is one swamp, three mountains, four islands. Uh, there's another mountain here in Mox Ruby. Chrome Mox is whatever I'm willing to pitch to. Mana Crypt and Mox Emerald are both colorless for the purposes of this deck. I'm probably going to end up with more than one swamp. That's only three total black sources, uh, four if you count Lotus Petal. And reanimating could be part of my plan. All right, it's going to be part of my plan, but we'll see how heavy it ends up. That leaves me 12 slots to work with, and there's 16 cards up here. That's actually not as tight as I thought it was going to be. I think that Bolas' Citadel is bad. I think Torrential Gearhulk and Urza are going to earn their slots in the fair deck. Scarab God is in the fair deck. Fallen Shinobi's in the fair deck. I want to start getting a little unfair, so the sneak attack, the animate, the reanimate, and the exhum are coming in. Archon of Cruelty is just the best thing in this deck to animate or reanimate. It's the second best thing to sneak attack behind Emrakul. Inferno Titan gets a slot here. I sorted out by mana value, see what this deck actually looks like. There's one slot left. Emrakul is the most exciting thing. Probably in the whole cube, I, it may be Blightsteel Colossus is better to sneak attack or through the breach with. But not only can you not reanimate it, but it nukes your graveyard if it ends up there somehow. Like if we get Thought Seized and they take Emrakul, that not only is not a reanimation card, but it also messes up my graveyard for good. Sundering Titan. I guess I have a pretty low land count that could punish me as bad as anyone else. I could just get Vamp Tutor to tie the room together. I think Citadel and Yogwill are officially disqualified. And then one of these last three up here gets to make the cut. Oh, another important layer is Chrome Mox. Chrome Mox can't pitch Emrakul or Sundering Titan, but it can pitch Vampiric Tutor. And having Chrome Mox without something to feed it to, or feed to it, is really bad. Okay, I think I like these spells. Now to revisit the mana base. There is a lot of black mana in this deck. There's six pips that we could reasonably expect to cast, and then black black on Archon of Cruelty, which probably won't come up, but it might. There's currently three black sources. I have actually fewer red cards than black cards, but one of them does cost red red, and it's one of my enablers to get the rest of my deck functioning. In my dual lands, I already have four blue sources, which gives me eight total in the deck, three total red sources, six or three total black, six total red. Lotus Petal is just a wild card uh, hanging out. I'm not counting Lotus Petal in my mana distribution in the mana base. That'll just be a pleasant surprise when it comes up. Maybe I don't get to play Strip Mine. I think I need a, another Swamp in the deck. Another Swamp in the deck. That brings me up to four Black Sources. And I actually think one of these Mountains should be a Swamp as well. Right now I have five Black Sources, five Red Sources, eight Blue Sources. Do I need eight Blue Sources? That's another question. Maybe one of the Blue Sources should be a Red. Yeah, turn Island back into a Mountain. Because really, Jace is the only blue card that I want to cast on curve. The Taxian Probe costs zero. Time Walk, you frequently would rather cast later when you're already doing something else, but it's fine as Explore early on. Okay, I think this is going to be my deck. And this feels like a pretty solid normal Vintage Cube deck. Let's hope that the counter spells that I prioritize taking throughout the draft Help me keep up with the actual Supreme Cube drafts. Let's do it. I'm on the play in round one. No fast mana. I do have turn two Jace, turn three Layla. Or turn three Frantic Search into Layla. I'm going to keep this. It's not just like bangerang sexy, but my deck doesn't do a whole lot of that. Other than like a mox to do each of these things a turn sooner. There's a lot of looting in this hand though if I can find a monster to, to fire off. My opponent's a fan of the channel. I hope their deck is not so busto and they get to flex for everyone. Shelldock Isle, okay. 
Let's see if they can pay this off. Uh, I passed it because I wasn't sure if we'd be able to get there. I think I took something better also. But it was a strong consideration when we saw it. I'm going to sandbag my red source. If they do have wasteland, strip mine, whatever, I don't want them to be able to take me pay off a of color. So I can Jace loot and Frantic search. And if the top four cards in my deck contain a Mox, I can cast Urza next turn. Or if there's a reanimate spell, I could dump the Urza and reanimate it. Shuffled off that ponder. Oh no, a plains. Oh, Black Lotus. We didn't get one of those. Oof. The fairy's pretty fucked up. Okay, Black Lotus to fairy. That's tough stuff. All right. Um, I can Urza this turn. I can at least cast the reanimate if nothing better shows up. Let's start with a frantic search. Ooh, something better showed up. Yeah, I'm going to discard Archon of Cruelty and Urza. I think I want to save Inferno Titan to go through the... No, Urza's castable. I'm going to discard Inferno Titan here. And then I can recast Jace and reanimate my creature. Archon, let's go. Trigger. Wow, Sacrifice is a creature or Planeswalker. That's the first time I've seen that text come up in a game of Magic. Okay, cool. They discarded an island. Yeah, that was a powerful turn. Frantic Search is fucked. Petty Theft, okay. Uh, if Jace, if I can get a card into my graveyard this turn. All right, looks like I'm not going to be able to do that. All right, I'm going to loot with Jace. Discard Archon, okay. Uh, this just got really interesting. Season, or er, Young Pyromancer. Time Walk. Now I'm just actually playing Grixis Xerox in actual vintage right now and then now i can oh my god i can time walk and reanimate i was gonna say i have to decide between time walk and reanimate but that's not even true all right i'm gonna discard through the breach i don't mind revealing that that's in my deck i'm gonna flash back time walk here's time walk and i'm gonna animate dead the archon which is gonna get to attack right away because I have time walk going. I'd like to point out nothing about what I just did was supreme. It was just really good cube stuff. I have no double cards. There was only time walk was like the power involved in that start. So like if you like that sort of game, vintage cube might be for you, supreme or not. I don't really have a sideboard. If I see some problematic land like Caracas or something, I, I guess I can bring in strip mine, but I guess I did see a problematic land. I saw a Shaldock Isle. Is removing Shaldock Isle a priority for me? Teferi shuts down Torrential Gearhawk. That's kind of annoying. We did see Teferi. We also saw Black Lotus. All right. I'm not going to bring in Strip Mine for Shaldock Isle. Turn one Young Pyromancer, but not really anything to follow it up. I think I am going to keep this hand. The fast mana is worth a lot. Like, this hand can facilitate. Like, top deck Fallen Shinobi, or even top deck Inferno Titan. There's a plan here. Bone them all to five. And Ponder. All right, I'm glad that was Ponder and not a different one mana blue spell. Where you get to keep all of the cards. Chose to shuffle. Good news for me. Land is bad news for me. I am going to run the mana crypt out there and cast the Pyromancer. It's worth the potential damage to get ahead like this. Maybe I should have let on Volcanic Island, though, to maximize what spells I can draw. Lost the flip. Uh-oh. Back for two. I'm going to play my Watery Grave tapped right now, while that's still a thing I can do. I would love a Frantic Search right now. That's probably one of the best draws in my deck. Spellseeker. All right, let's see what busted spells you have. Do you have a Time Walk? Accessory Call. Okay, they do have that one. This would be a good time to draw Force of Will, actually. I can hard cast that. Won the flip, hooray. Ooh, Shinobi. But now they have a blocker. I should probably just cast this jerk. Yeah, they would definitely block. There is there's no reason not to. If I had made even a single token leading up to this point, this would have been a lot more exciting. Here's the Ancestral. Fast Bond, yikes. The Malta 5 helps with Fast Bond. They have one extra land drop here. Passing the turn. 
Boss the flip. We are directly at expectation. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That's a good one. Okay. This is kind of a forced block. Like, you can't just let Fallen Chernobyl hit you. So, Young PZ can get through. And I can hard cast Force to protect myself now. I have six mana. All Drifter. Yeah, I'll point Force of Will at literally anything. Because Fallen Chernobyl connecting is worth so much. Okay. Please don't concede. Let me hit with my Shinobi. Uh, Gitaxian Probe. Let me see what you're working with. I'll pay life. Pay the iron price. Oh no, they don't want me to see their hand. They would have taken the hit from Fallen Shinobi, but don't want to see the hand. Okay. Strong start to this Supreme Cube. Let's keep it rolling. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the draw in round two. I have another young PZ Mana Crypt hand, but this one actually has other spells in it too. I'm in. And it worked out last time. This would be a great time to have Tinker in my deck. I have the, the blue source Mana Crypt start. Too bad we didn't get one of those. Uh-oh. I thought the turn was over, but here's a Black Lotus. They did not shuffle their library. Old Pyromancer. Okay. Pyromancer Tribal, let's go. Gonna need a red source to make it happen, but... Here it is. Young P. Volcanic Island is the best draw in my deck, or Spire Bluff Canal. They're the same card right now. Uh, but... Casting Season Pyromancer while providing the blue or black source to curve into the next big thing is a big deal right now. Won my flip. Drew a Swamp. Boo. I have four mana, but it's the wrong four mana. Swamp is fine for next turn, though. I'm excited about it. I can cast Scarab God or Ninjutsu. Got a little fact or fiction. Okay. Um, upheaval. Uh, this is a pretty spicy fact or fiction. I can give them mana or stuff to do with the mana. You just divide it out like that. Because if I separate upheaval and snapcaster, they end up with upheaval either way. I'm going to give them mana or stuff to do with mana. The classic pile. They took the mana. Okay. Ox Emerald. So even more mana than we knew about. This is a Supreme Cube deck. Black Lotus, Soul Ring, Mox Emerald, Upheaval, Library. We got a banger. Grand Dynamo. <laughs> there is one card left in this hand that is not a land. Let's hope Fallen Shinobi can crack this thing open. Okay, Young P, get in there. Steal their cards. Ninjutsu. Give me something good. Yes, here we go. I got a Memory Deluge and a Channel. Uh, I mean, Channel can cast Young Pyromancer. Memory Deluge. Look at the top X cards. You ready for this one? Where X is the amount of mana spent to cast this spell. <clears throat> you may cast those cards without paying their mana cost. So I don't have to cast Deluge. I don't want to put it in their graveyard for them. I will cast Channel, though. That just gets my Pyromancer back into play. We can do that. Pay one life, add one. And Young Pyromancer is here. I guess, like, let's see. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, they can easily flash this back. If I play it, I get a 1-1. One, one. That's not worth it. Leave it in exile. I was almost excited. That would have been great if it was just divination, but it was much worse than that. Oh, they're cracking their Scalding Tarn. They got something. They're all dressed up. Do they have somewhere to go? And tapping their Monolith in the main phase. Interesting. I'm going to attack first. See what happens. Oh, Shinobi connected again. Give me some busted spells. Miscalculation. Oh, well. Uh, it certainly was. I can hit my land drop out of their thing. I can't cycle from here. I can play Urza. Uh, there's Urza. And then one, two, three, four. Can't do anything else with Urza. Okay. I mean, wait. No, okay. I didn't have double red. I was like, wait, did I just miss lethal? Uh, but no, I couldn't have cast my Inferno Titan. Okay, it looks like mana and spells was the correct split on that factor fiction. I don't know what their hand was like when they made their choice, but it, I bet if they took spells, they would have been happier, but I don't know. I don't know what they had going on. They might have taken mana and then just ran a bunch of crap off the top. Okay, 
I don't think my deck changes. Don't have much of a sideboard. I didn't see anything I would want to strip mine. And this is my deck. Let's go. Okay, I do like having Force of Will in my hand. We They showed us a deck full of mana, and that might be light on actual threats. I'm going to keep this. If I can pinch even like one important thing after they develop, that might be enough to get over the finish line. Yours is pretty cool. I'm going to play my island. I'm not going to play my mox. I don't think there's a... Oh, <laughs> their deck has miscalculation in it. That's a reason to play mox, in case they were to force me back. Yeah, I'm not going to fight over any mana development. That's just not what we're doing here. Ooh, ah, uh, Urza, heartbreaking. Um, I can go up to five mana right now, but it's not double blue, so I can't stick this Urza. I could cast Frantic Search, but that's a lot worse when you don't have three lands in play. I think I'm still going to do it. I'm going to play my... Swamp. That probably should have been Mountain. I'm just spewing off value left and right here. Okay. Uh, found a blue source. I'm gonna discard Inferno Titan for sure. And am I actually done with Mana Crypt for this game? Like the development window is kind of past. I can cast Urza next turn. Can I cast Urza and Exhum next turn? No. And Urza is now my blue card to pitch anyway. Okay. So I'm going to untap my two lands and none of your two lands. Then I'm going to exhume and zap you. Okay. I have an Inferno Titan and Force Backup. Let's go. Now I have the choice of play red. Let's do some math. I attack for nine twice. They're dead. So the extra, okay, the extra red on the fire breathing doesn't really matter. Get in there. Three damage upstairs. Then another six on the way through. And I'm not going to cast Urza. That's still my blue card for force. Getting factor fictioned. Memory deluge. Okay. I don't have to make any decisions about that one. I like that one better. And that uses the Grim Monolith. So they're, they've lost their mana advantage. Now they have to beat this Inferno Titan. Straight up. Yeah, cycling miscalculation doesn't beat Inferno Titan. We got the GGs in the chat. Turns out, turn two Inferno Titan with force backup is pretty good and limited. Count it. On to the trophy round. On the draw in the third round, this is not a keepable hand by any stretch of the imagination. I'm gonna mulligan this. I recognize my opponent's username. I'm not sure why. I feel like I know this person. Like, in real life. I don't think they're a content creator. I just feel like I actually know them. Um... I can go all in on Layla. Like, I can... I'm keeping Lotus Petal. I, I think I just bought a Mountain, actually. Yeah, I got a draw step. I'm not sure if I want to pitch Sneak Attack to Chrome Mox to turn one Layla, but I also might want to do that. Let's find out together. Uh-oh. 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 Uh-oh, there's more. Oh my god, okay. Storm is four. Okay, uh, Volcanic Island, Lotus Petal, Chrome Mox. I'm actually going to pitch Infernal Titan because I think I'm going to get more out of Sneak Attack if this game even goes another turn. Oh, bummer. Exiled my Time Walk, but can't play it this turn. Don't have the mana to do that. Okay, Time Walk's gone. But we do have a draw engine and a source of damage in play. Let's see if it matters in the face of this supreme. This is a supreme cube start. Oh, Grimonolith too. We're not done yet. Is there a payoff? We saw last round how you can get all juiced up, but if there's no payoff, it doesn't matter. All right, that is a payoff. Uh, the construct is enormous, and Urza can start whipping cards into play next turn. Okay. Um, I think I need to attack with Layla. Oh, I shouldn't have played my land if I was going to do that. There's no way to exile stuff from my graveyard. Okay, I'm going to attack with Layla just to get the card draw. Yep, there's the fucking mountain that I shouldn't have attacked if I was planning on using. Okay, uh, I do have Mana Crypt, though. If I draw a fatty, I can sneak attack and sneak in the fatty all at once. All right, they're activating... Or, oh, they found Jace the Mind Sculptor. Don't worry about it. 
and they're fate sealing me immediately. They have correctly recognized that I'm going to die real quick. They left the card on top, whatever it is. I hope it's a fatty. Nope. Fire Bluff Canal. I don't want them to know that I have sneak attack in my hand, much less my deck. Like if they do just leave me with Archon of Cruelty or something, thinking that I can't use it. Oh, they brainstormed this time. That makes sense from here. An Urza flip, Zealous Conscripts. Okay. That is a haste creature. And they get to steal my volcanic island for the turn. And cast Ancestral Recall off of it. Okay. This is a Supreme Cube deck. We finally found one in the finals. And I go to four. I have to rip a fatty right now, and they can't interact with it. Fatty. Archon. Shit. All right. We're dead. Yeah, Archon of Cruelty there, drawing two cards, killing two of their creatures, gaining six life. That might have been something. Okay. Uh, there's that. Still don't think my sideboard really plays here. My cards are what they are. Let's do it. This hand, I have Vamp Tutor. I also have Mana Leak. Okay, I'm going to keep this. And I think I'm going to go... Island Mox, pass, and then I can sculpt something over the next few turns, depending on if how often or early I need a Mana Leak. But holding up Mana Leak is priority number one, because their deck's better than mine. Got it. Force of Negation. All right. So this might be a situation where I Vamp Tutor for uh, Ancestral Recall. Uh... They don't have three mana to pay for that just now, so I will fight over that one. And Grim Monolith, okay. I'm gonna Vamp Tutor. We'll figure out together what for. I have five mana, it's blue and black. And I could get Shinobi and just bet. I could get Frantic Search and try to loot into something worth reanimating. I think it's Fallen Shinobi or Frantic Search. Those are the, the choices here. If I had a monster, it'd be a pretty easy frantic search. I don't have double blue. I can't just, like, get Uro. I think I'm getting Fallen Shinobi. Let's go. If they counter or kill my Shinobi, I can animate dead it. Hopefully they don't just kill me over the top. Also, hopefully they don't play Jace and just bounce it. That's several turns of answers to this thing just lined up. <laughs> or they could steal it and, and cast cards out of my deck. Okay, uh, please don't get my Archon of Cruelty. Please. 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 Sneak Attack Chrome Mox. Okay. Uh, they are a red deck. So Sneak Attack is scary. But they don't have red mana. They didn't cast the Chrome Mox. That's kind of weird. Because uh, they have shown me that they care about their number of artifacts in play. Okay, I'm going to attack with Fallen Shinobi. Hopefully do some damage. Nope, no damage. Two lands. Sucks. Sucks. I can hard cast Force of Negation, but they're done casting spells, I'm pretty sure. Okay, here we are. Dead to my own sneak attack. They have anything with four power. Okay, they're in combat, and that didn't happen. I'm at four. Could die to Mana Crypt. Won the flip. We live again. Arab God's not bad. They could block off of Sneak Attack, or we could just hit them again. Okay, Mox Diamond and Mountain. Mountain. I will play the Mox Diamond. I can discard this Underground Sea. And then one, two, three, four, five. Cool. I can play Scarab God, and I'm still holding up Force of Negation. All right, please don't Sneak Attack me. Bribery. Force of Negation. Ah, ah, ah. That bribery would get a big... Archon of Cruelty, and end the game quick. There's no targets for Scarab God right now. I'm gonna scry Water Grave to the bottom. Alright, I've won all my Crypt Flips. Life is good. Um, I guess I attack first. They have to block. Okay, they take 5 from Scarab God. And I can animate dead their Zealous Conscripts. I can also Scarab God their Conscripts. One, two, three. All right, if I cast Old Pyromancer first, I'm going to discard the Animate Dead, but I get to draw two. On Young Pyromancer, okay. 
All right, check out this cool trick. I'm going to go to... All right, maybe this trick doesn't work. Yeah, this isn't a trigger. Um, okay, uh, the trick works in their upkeep. I'm going to go to their upkeep. I'm going to reanimate Zealous Conscripts. And I'm going to steal Sneak Attack before they get a chance to draw a card and activate. Find a creature worth stealing. I guess I could have just stolen the creature, huh? Okay. That might not be as cool as I thought it was. We did it! All right, they revealed their hand. That was probably a misclick, but okay, they were through the Breach deck, and they had Sneak Attack, so they were ultra-covered to put a creature into play if it ever came up. Zealous Conscripts. Gotta watch out for that one in my Reanimator deck. But I don't really have a plan for it. Same deck, let's go. Force Negation came in clutch. I'm glad I took that one as early as I did. Uh, yep. This is a very fast Archon. Could be turn two if I draw a colored spell I'm comfortable pitching to Archon. <laughs> I'll mull to five Ancestral Recall. At least they mull to five, though. We take those. I'm going to play the Underground Sea. I have shown them multiple counter spells. I want to at least represent something. Mana Vault. Scary. All right, come on, colored spell. Jet. Uh, this has gone poorly. All right, well, the Chrome Mox looks pretty bad this game, but I'm going to get to go through the Breach this turn if I get another turn. Okay, draw for my turn. Time Walk is not bad. What does this look like? If I play my Swamp and my Mana Crypt, I can put an Archon as an instant and not play into counter spells. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I draw a colored spell, I can Archon into... I feel like just holding this up as an instant is the play now. Because they've shown me through the breach. Like so. All right. Do you have a counter spell or am I a genius? Bango! Okay. We did that. The Zealous Conscript still punished this because the Archon will be in play on their turn. But even that's not too bad. And I found Scarab God. So when this Archon gets... Does it exile or sacrifice? Sacrificed. Alright, so Archon will be in the graveyard for the Scarab God. Jace, okay. Uh, brainstorming immediately. That is the correct play. One, two, three, four, five, six. If I draw a colored spell right now i'll be able to time walk and scarab god and then activate scarab god yes okay uh let me figure out my colored sources here watery grave shock that in one two three four five scarab god chrome mox exile inferno titan time walk and then I'm going to reanimate the Archon in my upkeep. So I get a trigger off it. I get to eat Jace, draw a card, and then Scarab God gets to scry. And they packed it up. We did it. 3-0. and I'm trying to pull the deck back up. It looks like there's not a good way to do that. But 3-0 and with that exciting reanimator through the breach fatty deck uh it didn't look like a vin a supreme cube deck at first but it was very good throughout our last round opponent definitely had a supreme cube draft deck uh they had so much fast mana so many powerful spells and we we made some good calls like the uh i i think that game three waiting on the the through the breach rather than just jamming it into open mana brilliant if i do say so myself a little pat on the back here but that's a 3-0. and That was Supreme Cube. This format's a lot of fun. I recommend it as long as it's live. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Francis York Morgan, for having me play this. Oh, look, I'm, I'm tied for trophy leader right now in the limited room. That's only happened once before, and it was also when I won the first draft of the season. Awesome. Thank you all for being here. See you next time.